Okay, we've been testing, um, this is just a test location, it's not a real installation, and we've wired six um, five kilowatt inverters in parallel. Um, so one of, we've had a number of issues, the first problem I did have with it was a fault condition and non-communication problem at the beginning, um, which we've sit, we solved. The first problem is when we wired them in, um, in fact what I've done is a master, um, a master and slave, master slave, master slave, and then I've joined this one in here, and I've joined this one in here, so I've kept the cables fairly small. One of the first problems we had, because of six, these dip switches that are here need to be on the on position. So they need to be on, um, that's quite important. They're resistors, so when you're using the six, you need to be that, in that way. Um, we've now since resolved the communication issue, but we then had another problem, which all sorts of things come up. Come up. And that was caused by what they call a phase rotation. I tried to explain that before, but when you're actually testing in real terms, um, using use what they call a phase rotation meter, um, and what you see here, I've wired one, two, three, and you see the phase rotation meter is going backwards. So, as everybody will know, if you're going the wrong way round, you swap swap two wires around, and if I swap this here and here and then you see the phase rotation meter is running correctly. Now, okay, I just swapped the meter, so clearly there's a problem. So the problem is, is now we need to have the order of one, two, three, in that order, following the phase rotation meter, or I can swap the grid feed wires around if I wanted to. But rather than swap the grid feed around, I can do it just by a setting, that, or you can either swap it, the grid, so swapping the two uh, the wires across there and there and you must make sure that you've got perfect phase rotation. Everybody asks about the settings, so let's look at the settings on each one. There was loads of faults coming up. So if I go on to, if I go on to here, advanced multi-inverter, this is the master, uh, and it's set at Modbus 1, phase A. The one, the one, underneath, the one underneath it is a, a slave to it, and you see the settings on the slave, it is Phase A, Modbus number two, and it's a slave. Don't forget to click the parallel button. Okay, now, because we had a problem, this becomes number two in the line, because that's the phase rotation. If you look on my meter, number two on the meter is here. So this must become number two. So we're getting correct phase rotation is the middle. So this is number two. So let's go into the settings here, advanced setting, multi-inverter, and this is phase B, which is B, which is the middle one. And then you see I use my bus number three and parallel. Very important. And the slave under the slave underneath it, we're doing exact we're doing exactly the same. And you see slave, and this is mod bus four, and it is B, which is the slave. So the final one, which actually is the middle one because of the rotation. So if we look at we look at the settings on the middle one, a multi invert this is phase C. Even though it's in this order, I moved it to become phase C. And mod bus number five is a master in parallel. And then this is the slave to that unit. Um, and we can go on advanced here and then uh, multi inverter. And you see it's number six. And this is on phase C. So we now know we've got, I'll take the meter off because it's useless leaping. Um, you know, if, you, if you're going to do three phase, you must get one of these things. Without one of these things, you're working blind. There is an indication on the inverter if you're wired in incorrectly, but um, don't always treat what the, you know, you could get interference or other reasons. So it's one, it's one important thing. What I've got in here is, you see the CT coil. This is the feed coming in, CT coil on the feed. So I've got three CT coils. Each of the masters have got a CT coil, very important. Um, we're going to do some further testing on this setup later. Um, if I look at the voltages here, and if I go on to by pressing the battery icon, you get this screen here, and you see my output here is 223 volts. Um, and if I go on here, we can go on here, and you see the inverter is running. In fact, what it's doing is actually charging the battery at the moment. And I go on here, and I can go on here, and I go exactly, exactly the same, press the battery icon, and you see it's charging it. So there you have it. This is basically wiring three, um, or six inverters in a three phase. Um, I've got my three phase. Be very careful, obviously it's 440 volts and we're running off a three phase socket. This is just purely just for testing purposes here. It's, it's actually in our, in our workshop in Hong Kong. So we've done an improvement, or the guys have done an improvement, where we can parallel the um, generator input 
So we'll go to test that later today to see the generator. One more thing that we've added onto this, which is to be, be aware of, um, which we which we were we were asked about it, is um, and I'll go on to one of the one of the settings is here. You see here, um, there's two settings here. One of them is CT coil ratio. The CT coils that we include on it are one to 2,000 ratio. If you need to use a bigger CT coil, sometimes these CT coils are one to 3,000 or one to 4,000. So make sure you can adjust it here. The default is one to 2,000, but you can adjust it for different CT coils. And we're working on, just so you know, we're working on MCU 2151 and communication, which is the uh, user interface of E. 415 so these are the versions we're running these seem to be running okay we are going to make another couple of upgrades later but i think the most important thing the basic principles will remain the same and it, no change on that so it's very clear the wiring and everybody's asking me how to wire it and everyone always gets mixed up these cables that come with it the communication cables work fine these are for paralleling you've got two sockets in here parallel socket it doesn't matter which way around they're both the same so you can swap them around and it won't matter of course if i unplug them now i'm going to get a communication fault it will, the whole thing will shut down because it will be talking but it doesn't matter just keep it nice and short and ideally the cables that come with it just use them don't try to extend it because these are fine um and then uh, we tend to, to hit through the middle one and go out that way um so this is a very simple configuration um of course if we were wearing it properly we'd have it all trunk trunk in trunk and everything would be neat and keep the AC separate to the DC. I know all of that, but this is purely just a demonstration how the thing works. So I hope that video is useful. Thanks for watching.